Well, heat-related illness actually encompasses a spectrum of different clinical entities, and they get progressively more severe. The first is we denote as heat cramps or heat stress, and that's when the body's temperature gets only a little bit overwhelmed, and you develop muscle cramps and a little bit little bit of fatigue. The next part of the spectrum is called heat exhaustion and that's a little bit more severe. Somebody might complain of being thirsty, being tired, being fatigued, nauseated. They may start to vomit or have diarrhea and they may actually be confused and not know where they are. And the final spectrum of a heat-related illness is a very severe one, and that is heat stroke. And that is a potentially fatal clinical entity. And that's when the body cannot deal with the high temperatures that it is being exposed to. The patient may complain again of fatigue, confusion, delirium. They may even have seizures. They may even pass out become comatose, and the body actually may progress to multi-organ system failure. Children and especially young infants are more at risk for heat-related illness because they can't regulate their temperature as well as adults can. They don't sweat as much as adults can, and many of their bodily functions, such as their liver, their kidneys, and their heart, are immature, especially young infants. Nobody should be left alone in a car. One study I can quote is actually the car's temperature increased to 145 degrees Fahrenheit within 20 minutes with all the windows closed and the air conditioning off. So that's a very, very dangerous temperature, especially for young infants. Um, also, it is important for young infants not to be bundled, overly bundled at all. Any concerns, any progression of symptoms or any serious symptoms, like your child is lethargic, won't eat or drink, has a rash, or is not acting right, you should see your health care provider and or take him or her to the emergency department immediately.